All right, I was doing maintenance on this unit here and I noticed oil. Well, first I noticed my temp split was low. I only had like 11 degree temp split. And when I opened up the outdoor unit, notice some oil. There's oil all along here. This looks pretty oily. And it's oily all the way up to like right here. So we're gonna leak check, see what we see. The cap must be cracked and it's leaking out of the cap. See, the cap is like bowed up. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's cracked right in there. Right along there. But, which also means our king valve is leaking. Yeah. The king valve wasn't even open all the way. I opened it all the way up. Maybe that'll stop it from leaking. Let's see if I got a new cap too. I don't know how that one ended up so bowed out like that. Uh, I don't have a cap this size, but I don't know, just for shits and giggles, let's try to solder it. <laughs> let's try to solder it. I wonder if it was weak anyway and the pressure of the refrigerant caused that to happen. I don't know, that would be that would have to be some pressure. Look at it bowed like that. As far as I knew, they're supposed to be flat across. Maybe this one is, is bowed a little bit. You can see it's cracked there too. Yep, it's cracked straight through. I think I got the king valve to stop leaking, so this is just a, basically for good measure, but. I put one of these on it, 45% uh, silver. It's got that blue around the edge, that's flux. So it's got flux already built into it. I got it. Well, it looks like we're in a better situation than we started. No more leak. Yeah, so we're running for about five minutes now. We're pretty low. 
our suction line temperature is steadily coming up. So we got the refrigerant hooked up. We're gonna top off the charge. See here. Still no leak. I think I might have added a little too much to try to get this suction pressure up. Um, but we got 17 degrees of subcooling, about 4.4 superheat. Suction line temperature is really cold. But I think I think we got a pretty chilly house. We're gonna go check the split next. But I put three pounds in it. Right around two, a little over two pounds. And um, it was looking good, but I just tried to get that suction pressure up a little bit. Let's go check the temp split. Yeah, that's what I thought. We got a really chilly house, like 61. Mm. Temp split's at 14 or so. I don't have, I'm not in the best spot right there. So I might be able to add a degree or two because I'm after this transition here. So, I mean, I might call that like a 15 or 16 degree split. But yeah, we got a, we got a really chilly house here. All right guys, so we made that repair today. Um, I just realized I didn't shoot the end of that. Um, that system, it seems like it has some more issues with that cold suction line temperature. Um, so I didn't know this, but the customer was actually already thinking about replacing that system. Um, so it looks like uh, I turned it over to the sales department and they're going to get them a price on replacing the system. Um, they're trying to be proactive. The system's 15 years old. Um, and I told him, I said, look, we can dig into it a little bit deeper and see why this thing is, um, is not running properly because I had the low uh suction pressure and the uh, the very cold suction line and i i was fearing that that thing might freeze up now that it has a full refrigerant charge in it uh, so i went to the customer with some options and stuff and uh um they probably want to replace that system anyway they were kind of thinking it was almost time i could probably get them a few more years out of it but you gotta love a customer that wants to be proactive and get that equipment out of there so that's what's going to happen with this one. I've turned it over to the sales department and um, they're going to get them a, a new 96% um, gas furnace. Probably um, probably going to go uh, Carrier Infinity, hopefully. Um, but we'll give them some options. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.